Okay, in Greco, there's uh, three two-minute two periods. We wrestle on our feet for a minute 30, and then we go into a 30-second part period. The wrestler must win two of the three periods in order to claim victory. We start on our feet. The wrestlers start here in the center. They shake hands. They would wrestle for a minute and a half on their feet. If there's no point scored, break. If there's no point scored, the red wrestler always goes on top first in the first period. If there's no score scored in the second period, the blue wrestler goes on top. In this instance, it will be the red wrestler. His choice, his choice is uh, the parterre position where he's going to go and put his hand on his back. Or the second option is that he can take what we call the reverse lift clinch position. And they wrestle from here for 30 seconds. In this 30 second period, the red wrestler must score. The onus is on him. If he does not score, the bottom wrestler receives one point and would win the period. In the other case, if they were wrestling, if Jimmy scored a point and he was a red wrestler, he would still go on top, but now the onus is not on him to score. Once you score one, two, or three points in the period, you still obtain this top position if you're the red wrestler, the winning wrestler, or the, whoever had the greater number of points, and all you would have to do is wrestle here for a 30 seconds, or most of the time it's 15 seconds. And then they brought, bring them up. We'll go back to the parterre position. For all you coaches, that are coaching uh, below cadet school boys and below. In this instance, you would um, you have to start on your knees in this reverse lift position. This is the position that the school boys and below have to start in in the clinch in this parterre position. Okay, and they wrestle from there for anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds. Now let's talk about scoring. In this instance, scoring to win a period, you could win by one. You can win by two, you can win by three. Also in this, in this minute 30 period, if, you, if Jimmy performs two three-point moves, the, the, the period is over. And in, in a case like this, Jimmy do um, uh, a throw, okay? That's considered a three-point throw, do a reverse lift. If he came back and did a reverse lift and threw his opponent, that's a three-point throw, the period's over. Not only is it over because of three-point throws, it's over because that's six points in the period. Okay? You can also do that from your feet. If one of your wrestlers performs a three-point, do a three-point arm throw, he gets up and he hits maybe a three-point body lock. Okay? Again, the period's over. Here's a scenario that some of you coaches are um, going to explain how, who gets to go on top in the first period here, um, or any period. Um, one wrestler is going to do a three-point throw, one wrestler is going to have a one-point takedown and a gut wrench, and the score is going to be tied at 3-3 at the end of the period, and to determine who goes on top first, it would be the wrestler that had the greater value points, which is a three-point throw. And this is what it looks like. So in this case, the red wrestler would go on top at the end of the 30 seconds, and all he would have to do is not, he doesn't need to score. Now, um, the only way that the Carson could win the match is that he would either have to, he'd have to take Jimmy down for a one point, so the score would be 4-3. In this segment, we're going to talk about edge of the mat, um, the push out, that difference between folk style uh, and Greco. In this case, in Greco, it has to be when you're pushing an opponent out of bounds, it's one foot completely out of bounds, two hands out of bounds, a head completely out of bounds. This occurs only for Greco in the standing position. If Jimmy and uh, Carson were wrestling here and Jimmy pushes him out and he steps out, that's one point for Jimmy, for the red opponent. 
if they were in the front headlock position and Jimmy drives them out of bounds, it's one point. If they were in a seatbelt seat belt position, okay, here, and Carson puts his hand out, that's not out of bounds. Jimmy takes him, drives him out. That's one point for the red wrestler. Again, his hand and his feet were out of bounds. Um, the only time the push out doesn't occur in Greco for this situation, if they were in the parterre position and they wrestle to this position and Jimmy turns and pushes him out of bounds, there's no points awarded. Even if they were on their feet, it would be no points awarded. So it's the push out, it would be one foot, two hands, a head and a hand um, in Greco. That's the difference and folk style, there's no point to water there at all because there's no control. The difference is that we don't need control. In this instance, we're going to show you a five point uh, throw in Greco where it terminates the period. Any five point throw done and it's from feet to back and the wrestler must end in danger. Okay, high amplitude, his feet goes over your hips, guy lands in danger, five point throw ends the, ends the period. Okay, here's another scenario will happen in the last, in the 30 second parterre position. Jimmy needs to score here and he attempts a lift, he brings his opponent off the mat, that means taking his feet completely off the mat, he throws but Carson doesn't expose. That's, a, that's an appreciation throw, that's one. Okay, here's another scenario that will happen um, where the match would be 1-1, one, one, but actually the winning wrestler scored the last point. In this case, Jimmy may have taken uh, Carson down in the first couple of minutes, didn't turn him. Period, uh, the 30 second period comes. We go to the 30 second period, Carson's down by one. Jimmy doesn't have to score in this instance. He's down. Carson defends for maybe 15, 30, 15 seconds. The referee brings him up. Carson now wrestles. They start wrestling. It's maybe 10, five seconds left, and he pushes Jimmy out. The score is actually 1-1, one, one. but because he scored last, Carson would win the match, win this period, because he scored last, even though the score is tied 1-1. One, one. The last scenario in the Greco piece of the difference between uh, Greco and folk style. If in the three period, in the two periods previous, if the score in the third period ends up zero zero, meaning that Jimmy has one point, Carson has one point, everything is even, it, and um, that means uh, they will go to what the official call is a ball grab. They will go over to a table. The official will reach in, pull a ball out, which is either red or blue. And whichever ball he pulls out, that wrestler has to go on top and would have to score in the last 30 seconds in the third period in order to win. If he does not, then the bottom wrestler wins the match and the period. So we talked about if the match went to 0-0 and in the third period where the referee would go over and reach into a bag. There's another scenario that would happen if these two wrestlers were wrestling and they had the same amount of points at the end of three at the end of three periods Jimmy has six points Carson has six points they each have won a period but their their last period went zero to zero in order to determine who goes on top first it would go by as we just said the greater number of points but it's tied the next tiebreaker is a caution if neither one of them have a caution, the next tiebreaker is a higher cumulative point, meaning that they would look to see who had a three-point throw. Then they would go down to a two-point throw. If everything's even after that, they go reach in and, and grab the, and do the ball grab. So in the case that if everything was 6-6, six, six, if Jimmy had two two-point throws, he would get his choice of which way he wanted to go, top or bottom. Here we're going to talk a little bit about the parterre position, um, false starts, um, how a guy gets cautioned, why he's getting cautioned. Okay? In this situation, we'll see that the wrestler here, the top wrestler, first of all, the bottom wrestler has to be in 
a, a referee's position here with hands close together, knees together, and they can't sit back on their heel. Sit back on your heel. If he sits back on his heel, you'll hear the referee saying, attention, attention, correct position. This is called the correct position in Greco, where you want your, again, there'll be like four dots on the mat, your knees has to be on the dots, your hand. This is the correct position. The opponent can't sit back or lean different ways. Okay, the top wrestler, if he's going to go for the conventional start, has to have one knee down and his outside knees up. He has to put his hand on, place his hand on the back of the wrestler. Then the referee blows the whistle. In a lot of instances, this top wrestler is always trying to gain an advantage by doing what we call a jump start. The referee will then stop, stop it, and go attention to the wrestler, and he also says attention to the coach. So they know that they have one attention. Two attentions, um, the top wrestler could get a caution, it's one in a caution, and they stand him up. The same thing with the bottom wrestler. If he jumps, jump, that the wrestler said brings him up, and he says the first warning is an attention. He says it to the wrestler and the coach. So what would happen is if he jumps again, okay, this is they stop the match. It's a caution on the bottom guy. Normally the referee brings him up. Caution and one, and they start again in this referee's position. If it is if, if Jimmy jumps, okay, and he keeps jumping, they stop the match. It's caution and one on Jimmy. Now they stand the wrestlers up and they wrestle from here for the last 30 seconds, okay? The next scenario that may happen is that it's a leg foul. And this is what happens in the leg foul. If Jimmy gets Carson up, Carson leg fouls him as he's throwing, okay, that's a leg foul. The referee stops. It's caution and two and he's back down in the same position. And the leg foul can happen any time within the 30 seconds. But it's a caution and two, and the wrestler returns to the parterre position. Right now we're gonna talk about offensive legs in Greco. And Greco. Um, in a match, if they're wrestling, and the offensive guy bumps the guy, takes him down. In this instance, there's not a caution. They would, the referee would blow the whistle, bring him back up, no points awarded, and they would re-wrestle the match. Now, in the case that he does this three times in a row, the referee has the right to caution and give the other opponent one point. So, it rarely happens in a Greco match, but it, it can occur. Um, with offensive legs. Again, another case of offensive legs where um, Jimmy may be wrestling here, gets the guy in a body lock, plants his leg, pulls him over it, okay? That's offensive legs. You know, again, the referee stops the match, brings them back to their feet, and they would just start wrestling. Um, in this case, if Jimmy was wrestling and Carson blocked his leg, stopped him from going ahead, Stops him from throwing him, puts him on his back. This is a caution and two, or caution and one. In this case, Jimmy didn't go to his back. It would be caution and one. They would be brought back to their feet, and they wrestle from there. Here's another situation that occurs in Greco that where the bottom wrestler is going to, Jimmy's gut wrenching him, and he reaches up, and he grabs two hands on the head. This is a caution and one in Greco. And even if Jimmy turns him in this situation, the referee will award Jimmy two points for the gut wrench and one point for the caution for uh, the bottom guy grabbing his two hands on the head. 